Hello and welcome to IR Magazine's latest video series, Wednesday Winners, in which we interview IR Magazine award winners from around the world every Wednesday on the IR Magazine website. Today we're joined by Steve Hufford, Director of Investor Relations at Blackboard. So Steve, thanks so much for joining me. Yeah, hey Ben, good to see you again. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and so Steve, Blackboard's been on a bit of a roll uh, winning Best Use of uh, Technology and Social Media in 2019 at the US Awards. And uh, your colleague Mark won uh, Rising Star in 2018. Um, so we're going to start off by talking about you know, your use of social media as part of your IR program and kind of how that fits in. So yeah, perhaps you could start by you know, talking us through your approach. There. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, a, a little bit of backstory for us, we insourced the IR function about five years ago in 2014. And so as part of that, we had to do a lot of uh, best practice research. So Mark and I both like to joke, we're reformed accountants turned finance that have had to learn IR. So it's new, it was new for both of us. Right. And as part of that effort, we leveraged right, IR Magazine and Neary to learn best practice. And a lot of that was circulating around the virtual tools or, or technology tools available. So it really started, I would say, um, you know, with NASDAQ and IR Insights and leveraging the mobile app for roadshows and conferences, purely from a CRM. And that evolved into risk avoidance using Microsoft Teams for all document sharing and collaboration around earnings, right? So for several years, we've, we, did, we have set an attachment via email, right? So <laughs> we all know how, how many uh, external emails auto-populate. So it's, it's been a big, big win for us. And then just meeting folks, right? We went to virtual business cards because we got tired of printing them and that was a logical transition to social media. So after looking at a few platforms, we decided LinkedIn, you know, being the professional network was probably the, the best social platform for us. And we just started making connections after we would meet folks, we'd, we'd tag them on LinkedIn. And now we sit here and I think we have over 500 investors in the network. And it's just a unique way for us to push content that's IR relevant without sort of your typical email that gets lost in the inbox. So yeah. it's worked out quite well. I'd like to think it's positioned us well for, for the current environment. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes we hear from some IR professionals about um, a reluctance to invest time in social media because perhaps there's not uh, the level of engagement that they would expect or necessarily the return on investment in terms of time. So curious about you know how you measure that and also how you think about sort of what you're posting on LinkedIn. Whether you have a kind of a content calendar or, or how you think about that. Yeah, we don't have a, a, an organized calendar. I actually have been surprised. It's a bit of a two-way street. So it benefits us in that we can push the content that we think is relevant for investors. You know, if it's major, right? We're obviously following sort of normal disclosure. It's following a press release or AKA um depending on on the nature of it but some of the customer facing you know things that marketing will push out we can reshare to make sure they get to our base if, if we think they would find interest in it and it works the other way it actually allows us to stay closer to our investors right whether it be the firm or the contacts they're putting out content that matters to them mm -hmm. and it helps us have a conversation when we get in front of each other so in terms of questioning the value, I would say it comes up often in meetings. Folks mention they see it and appreciate it. So for us, it works well. That's great. That's, uh, that's great to hear. And, you know, a lot of IR professionals are taking a fresh look at their IR website, at their use of social media in light of COVID-19. Uh, given that we're not going to be at in-person meetings and conferences for the foreseeable future, uh, people are taking a look at sort of their digital IR programs. Are you doing anything differently or is this a case of kind of validating the work that you've done during the last few years? Yeah, I, I, near term, it's more the latter. So I think it's been helpful for us to have those avenues and be familiar with them. It enabled the transition to be you know, seamless for us. It's really been no different, um, you know, aside from doing these uh, <laughs> instead of face to face. Um, but it is, you know, I think over the next few months, I've been really pleased with how the, the conferences have gone. Um, they're well organized. We've had no issues personally. We've not done a road show yet, but I'm, I'm excited to get into that because I think there's some creative ways where we could make them more effective. Right? If, um, you know, if we do not limit 
the, the roadshow to geography, for example, and we can really be targeted in who we're trying to meet with. I think that's a better use of everyone's time. And I'll, I'll tell you, just sitting from the IR seat in general, um, I don't miss having to fight rush hour to try to jump on a plane to get home by midnight, you know? So it's, uh, it's a bit of a, a win-win. So no, no major shift, um, but we are thinking critically about what does the future look like? And I, I will undoubtedly say that virtual will be a balance for us. It'll be a part of the program. Yeah, it is kind of wild to think about, you know, the amount of time we all sat in, uh, you know, airport, airport waiting rooms and all that sort of stuff. It's, it's amazing yeah. to think how, uh, how different our lives are right now. Um, has, has COVID-19 had an, a, an effect on any other part of your IR program? You know, there's been a sort of tremendous amount of volatility in the market. I think that, ch that poses some challenges around storytelling and kind of what your, what your story is at any given moment. Is that a challenge you've been facing? Yeah, we've, we've tried to anchor ourselves um, in the long-term narrative because the short-term is just uncertain. And I, I think we all wrestled with it for a bit, but at the end of the day, it, it is what it is. So, <laughs> yeah, I think we've all, we've all now settled on that, being investors in IR, um, sell side in some cases. And, uh, but, you know, I, I think we'll, as long as we stay grounded in the long-term narrative, there's still conversations to be had. So. No major change, right? I mean, our annual meeting went virtual, so that was a new new thing for us, uneventful. Um, but but there has not been a significant change. Sure. Well, that's good. That's uh, that's good to hear. And a kind of final question for you, Steve. Outside of work, you know, we're all we've all been sheltering in place in some capacity. So, what have you been doing to stay sane while you've been sort of cooped up? Yeah, I am fortunate to work for a company headquartered in Charleston, South Carolina. So. The weather's been nice. There's been a lot of outdoor activities, you know, um, social distancing, of course. Uh, and then on the weekends, I'm doing my part to support the local breweries. So, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been great. I've been spending more time with the family than ever. So for us, you know, I'm loving it. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's good to hear. And uh, it's great to check in with you, Steve. Thanks so much for uh, participating in this. And I hope next time we're having one of these chats, it's in person. Great to catch up. We'll talk later, Ben. Absolutely. Thanks.